Hello, welcome to CEO Check-In. Happy Monday. I hope you had a restful weekend and maybe we're at some of the peaceful protests. There were some peaceful protests right here in my neighborhood. I live in Lincoln Center in Manhattan and I saw from my friends in Brooklyn that there were some peaceful protests there, including one in Brooklyn where the entire trans community that was at the protest was invited to stand up at the front and then everyone who's at the protest encircled them and had chants that are like, you're safe here, you matter, we love you. I don't know if they said we love you, but it was something like that. And I just found that so moving. Thank you for sharing Heather Willems, who's part of our Million Dollar Women community. So wherever you are, I hope that you got some time for yourself this weekend, that if you took part in protests, that that was meaningful for you. And they also got a chance to rest up because self-care is so important right now. Hi, Rabia, good to see you. Um, I went and saw my mother out in Connecticut. You might remember I was quarantining with her and she's on her own now, so I wanted to make sure she was doing okay. I also, she's doing great, happily. Um, I also handed her a scissor and said, please cut my hair right now, which happily she did. So I'm not sure it's completely even, but you know, we're all doing the best we can in these crazy times. Um, here in Manhattan, the uh, hair salons are not open yet. But I can tell you in Connecticut, you could actually go out to dinner on a patio. So I did that this weekend. It was like mind bogglingly wonderful to order a drink and have someone bring it to me and order food and have someone bring it to me at a table. They were wearing a mask. Um, we wore masks on our way in, but then we had enough space around us that we didn't have to wear masks during dinner. But it was just a little preview of getting back to some semblance of normal at some point, which we know is coming. And I know it's been really long that we're all just tired and ready for a change. I know that for me, part of having my mother cut my hair was just like, I just want to change. I don't even care if you mess it up. I just want there to be a change. So if you're feeling that way, you're not alone. Um, I just hope that uh, you have meaningful work and friends you're checking in with. I did a long Zoom call last night with a dear friend up in Vermont. And uh, sometimes you just gotta make time for your pals because we're all working very hard and not going out for drinks with our friends and not doing the kind of things that usually replenish our, our source of joy. So I hope you're making time to do some of those things. And if you're not, this is a reminder to do so. Um, last week we had Cheryl Tan on with us. If you missed it, she is an expert in helping small business owners use video. And she gave a lot of really great tips. Hi, Rainis Candy, hello, welcome. Um, if you're just joining us, this is CEO Check-In. I go live every Monday and Wednesday at this time to check in with CEOs across the country, see what I can help you with, do some coaching, and also make sure that we all stay in a positive mindset. And last week we had a guest, we're having a guest once a week now. We had Cheryl Tan, who runs Cheryl Tan Media and helps small business owners use video. And so if that's something that you've been struggling with, go check out the episode. Uh, I post all of these on my YouTube channel at Julia Pimsler Coach. So feel free to find the entire episode there and see all the great tips she gave, including just get started, right? Because one of the hardest things about doing video is just to do it. I know that for me, having a schedule really helps, knowing that it's always Monday and Wednesday. I did Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a long time, but now I'm using Friday for meetings of the Million Dollar Women community, like the one we had this Friday, where we discussed our scholarship fund and how we can be better allies to the Black Lives Matter movement. So thank you if you were with us. And if you weren't, there will be other meetings of the community because this is not a once and done kind of thing. We have a lot more work to do in our community and of course in our society to keep making the kinds of big, massive reforms that need to be made in our country and also in our interpersonal lives, right? I know I've been having a lot of conversations about race that I might not have had if we weren't in this turbulent time. So I hope you're taking advantage to also shake things up with your friends and family and colleagues and make sure that you're really talking about the big important issues, uh, including you know, how racial bias is in all of us, how we need to really look at our language, look at our behaviors, accept the fact that we're all racist because we were all socialized in America, which has this foundation of racism. And here at Million Dollar Women, we decided to read the book, um, 
uh, one of the books that's been recommended highly. I'm just blanking on the name all of a sudden, so I don't want to say the wrong name. I posted it to Story last night, but now I can't remember the name. So that's one thing you can do is read one of the books that's been recommended, and we have a number that we're recommending if you go to my feed on Instagram. Uh, we're going to read it as a team and talk about it. So that's a great way to kind of dig in and have a prompt for that. So anyway, today we're gonna to do some live coaching. If you want to go live with me, let me know. Um, I also wanted to give you guys a go big tip. So I'm gonna start giving go big tips. I was doing mindset tips, but now I wanna move into go big tips because there are a number of things that we can do as entrepreneurs that really set us up for success. And we know that having the go big mindset is critical to having success as a, big, as a business owner, but it's not the only thing. So I'm gonna start giving some tips here, some are mindset, some are business, so that I can start to help you to take those big leaps, start making money again, and make sure that you're benefiting from some of the best practices that top CEOs are using across the country. So my first go big tip is really about checking your mindset. There is such a thing as a success mindset, or we call it a go big mindset. And if you study what successful people have done and who they are, you'll find that it's not that they all went to Ivy League schools. It's not that they all were born with trust funds. It's not that they're even smarter than you. It's that they had a big vision for their lives and for what they wanted to do in the world. And it started right here. It started with, I wanna do this big thing and I'm going to do it no matter what. And that's called the go big mindset. So if that sounds foreign to you, if you're like, well, some days I feel like I can do it, but some days I just feel really kind of discouraged. Well, it's human to feel discouraged sometimes, but the more you can be in that state of excitement, ambition, I'm gonna get there, I'll find a way, that's the go big mindset. And if you can study with leaders, coaches, people who have already mastered this go big mindset, that is the number one thing that you can do to increase your chances of success as an entrepreneur and as a leader. You know I teach mindset and I'm writing a book on that right now that'll be out in April, but you don't have to wait for my book to work on your go big mindset. There are a lot of excellent books out there to help you and I would recommend uh, The Desire Map by Danielle Laporte, which I've talked about on here before, Leveraging the Universe by Mike Dooley, and You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. All fantastic books that can help you work on mindset so that you can get ready to just go find the skills and the networks and the resources you need to take your business big. Even in a pandemic, even in a recession, there are huge opportunities right now. And if you're in that go big mindset, you will be way more likely to find them and to bring into your circle the people who you need to succeed. So. That's my first little tip. I'm gonna have others on these CEO check-ins, but I wanted to now turn it over to you guys to see who would like a little bit of support today. And Raynus, I'm gonna throw it over to you and see if you want a little bit of support. Oh no, Raynus is unable to join. That may not be your name, that's just your handle. Um, let's see, here we go. We're gonna see who else is available today. Waiting to see. If not, I got plenty more to talk about, but I'm happy to see Ravia. Good morning, hello. Hi, good morning. How are you, Julia? I'm doing well, except the hair, which I think is a little uneven. <laughs> what do you hey, think? I think your, your mom did a pretty great job, I would did say. A great I job. might hire her next. Yeah. It, took about, it took about a minute. She like walked around me, the hair was dry, she had her mask on, because now that I'm back in New York, we have to social distance. So we had the, it had the obstacles of the mask. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I remember when my brother and sister and I were kids, when my parents went out one evening, we put a bowl on my little brother's head and actually did the bowl cut. And we got in oh. so much trouble because we used my dad's razor to do oh the undercut. Oh my God, hilarious. And he had a literal bowl. Like, they had a bowl so cut. Funny. I hope you took a picture. That's a good thing to pull out. <laughs> I really need to dig it out from a uh, throwback Thursday post somewhere. Completely. Yeah. I want to see that. I'm going to be looking for that bowl shot. Well, I think she did better than the bowl. She did better than no, the bowl. No, she did all. Awesome. I might have touched it up a little bit this morning with my, with my sister. <laughs> I think How it would be you great. Too. Thank you so much. And I'm going to say hi to Cheryl. So I see Cheryl just joined us. Greasy Girl 325. Um, yeah. Yes. So what's going on with you today work-wise? Well, I, um, I honestly, like this week, 
I'm, I'm glad the weekend passed and I feel like this sense of kind of momentum and the anger and frustration is, I wouldn't say it's gone, but it's kind of here um, compartmentalized for me, just given all that's going on. So I'm really like, okay, let me try to focus on my to-do list and, and knock a few things out. Um, so I, hear you. I think all of us were a bit on pause for like at least 10 days, yeah. right? While the country was like yeah. growing up and dealing totally. with issues that need to be dealt with, which actually are more important than like sending out your newsletter. Or than whatever. everything. Yes. yes. So yes. that's great. Totally. I'm really glad you did that. And yeah. what about now? Um, yeah, well, I'm I'm good. I'm working on actually. Um, I know I had mentioned to you um, the the personal pivot coaching program. So I'm gonna finish my video snippet today for that, and then I have a one pager. I want to launch it, and because um, I was sharing with you that just right before I joined, uh, uh, someone who I work with actually said, "Hey, this is kind of on the DL, but I'm about to resign, and I want to talk with you about my next move." And so it's becoming more and more. Uh, the trend I think I was sharing because of that moment for introspection and, and figuring out where people want to go next. Um, and I think the culmination too of now looking at systemic racism and how organizations are handling. Um, That's a handling good point. Everyone might not be happy with how their organization is handling it. Yeah. And that might be like the final thing that makes them think, you know what, it's time to pivot yeah. my life. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm, I actually am posting today, um, a few weeks ago before the whole George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter protests, I had posted um, three exercises over the course of a week for some self reflection for leaders. And I'm like, Oh, my gosh, the timing is so peculiar. But now um, I want to post a check in where it's like, hey, did you all have a chance to do this? And as, as I'm sure you know, in the news, so many executives have stepped down in the last few weeks and kind of given the reins to other leaders in the company. So yes, I feel like really there's been a lot. Of actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and a great idea to learning. relaunch that because people miss things, you know, like we launched yeah. um, on Mother's Day, my new exclusive ebook, Million Dollar Moms about oh, yeah, like, mom right. CEOs. Mm -hmm. But you know, not everybody saw it. It's like you have to you have to bring things back because timing is everything, right? People yeah. might, might pay way more attention to that now than they did when you first launched it. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things that really struck with me because I haven't, prior to connecting with you, I didn't really have a digital strategy or focus on it. And I'm like, am I posting too much or is it repetitive? But you're right. Not everyone is scrolling and looking at the same time. So I think it's a good reminder um, to, to keep kind of putting valuable stuff out there as much as possible. Yes, even so, though we worry, you know, are we being annoying? Is it too much? I already sent something out this week. Can I send out another thing? But I don't know yeah. about you, Robbie. I have never seen somebody I like their name in my inbox and thought, how dare you email me again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you already emailed me this week, right? I mean, now yeah, the subject line every time yeah. is like, you know, discount or special, then that gets annoying. But if it's like yeah. value and you bring so much value to the people you work with, I'm sure Thank they're you. happy to read what you write. And they probably missed a lot of things just because it's a crazy time, you know? So I am sure they'd be grateful to have a chance to see it again. Is there anything Absolutely. about the new course that I could be helpful with? The Pivot class, um, of course, I'm not sure what you're calling it, program? Well, it's a coaching program. You know, one thing that's been on my mind is this is something where um, I believe these leaders who are at different phases in their lives and, and different levels of experience, they would be investing in this um, out of their own personal budget as opposed to professional development supported by the, the corporate or organizational structure. Um, so that's one of the things that... Um, and that's different for you, right? Usually it was the yeah. corporation paying you as a coach. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'd love to know if you have any tips, if, if not about pricing per se, but how to really amp up the value prop for one's own personal investment. Because I know it's a different conversation in that way, or at least it feels like it has been. So I'd be curious yeah. to know if you have any thoughts around that. Well, I actually think it's a huge opportunity for you as a coach because we both know as coaches that the people who have the most motivation to change are the ones who actually put in the work and make the changes. So think yeah. about the difference between someone whose boss is paying for them to get a coach and someone who's paying themselves for the coach, right? Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. so motivated. They so want yeah. to change. They're going to listen to yeah. everything you say, right? So I yeah. actually think your job in, um, in vetting the people, because you don't have time to work with everyone, right, is um, to figure out, okay, who really wants this? Who really wants yeah. the change? We often yeah. ask women, you know, well, what's at stake for you if you 
don't make this change because you don't. the truth mm -hmm. is, you know, everybody wants more money, more time, more freedom, right? We all want the same things, but then yes. why don't we all have it, right? The reason we don't mm -hmm. all have it is that not everyone is willing to put in the work and invest yeah. in themselves in order to yeah. get it. And so how do you weed out the people who are just kind of like dabbling? Like, oh yeah, I kind of want to change, but I don't want to spend any money and right. Right, I don't want it to be too hard. <laughs> right? yeah. They yeah. may or may not get the results whoever they work with because they're not really that serious. Mm -hmm. Whereas there yeah. are people who are like, that's it. I am done with this life. I'm sick of this boss. I don't care how much they pay me if that's an issue. Right. Um, right? I'm ready to you know, have a greater impact on the world, to feel a greater sense of freedom, to go to mm -hmm. sleep at night loving what I do. So you yes. start with all that positive, but then you mm -hmm. have to quickly find out, Rabia, well, what if you don't, right? What if you don't mm -hmm. do any of those things? Is that yeah. okay with you? And try to really pull out from them, yes. what is at stake here? Because if there's a lot mm -hmm. at stake, then they're gonna hire a coach, they're gonna do all the work, and they're gonna be your favorite client ever. And if yes. what's at stake is like, well, you know, if I don't do it, I guess I'll just take more vacations, I'll be okay. Right, right. Then they're probably not going to hire you. And even if they did, they probably wouldn't really do the work. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, that is. No, I think it's helpful to filter out because that's one of the things you said. And I know we've talked about with your sales care method as well, like is um, being mindful of the types of clients that we take on too. So because it's not what I know what I do is not for everybody and 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 rightfully so, you know, so yeah. it's um, it's an investment because I pump everything I have into making sure the engagement. Oh my God, you give well. 180%. Yeah. I know how you are as a coach and I know people who've hired you and love you. And so, right, you don't Thank want to just you. have that be like open gates for everybody. I mean, obviously if they yeah. want to do the work and they're willing to invest, then they're welcome. Yeah. But there are people who aren't quite there. And some of them, by the way, they're just not there yet, right? When you ask yeah. what's at stake, maybe mm -hmm. they're not in enough pain yet to actually invest. Like I know that for yes. myself, I've hired so many coaches. I mean, I can name like six coaches off the top of my head. <laughs> I've awesome. invested over $100,000, right? Into my own professional wow. development. But each yeah. time, Rabia, I had to get to the place where I was like, this is not working, right? And it yeah. wasn't just like a little bit not working. It was, it was yeah. a lot not working. <laughs> for sure, yeah. So those are yeah. the clients you want, where they're like done with the old way and really ready for the new way. And yeah, you know, you're yeah. gonna help them so much. I'm so excited to see who comes into your orbit and gets that chance to work with you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm excited. And I was just gonna say that the one thing, and I might have shared, shared that with you that I'm hearing is, look, I don't know where I'm gonna be next, but I know I wanna show up differently. And I'm like, all right, let's that. figure out what that looks like. So it's, it's been such a common thread. So, so what does that look like? And then what is at stake if you don't? I think that would just exactly. be the two questions. And you know that's part of the sales cure, you know, my sales method. Yep. One thing I love about yep. the sales cure, which I created a couple of years ago, and you took and a lot of women on this call have taken, yes. including Cheryl, who's with us, hi Cheryl, is that it's really not about like, oh, I've got this amazing thing, let me try to sell it to you, right? That's yep. like the old sales way. That's like the vacuum cleaner salesman, right? Like we don't want yeah. anything to do with that. <laughs> you know, the new way of selling is a much more high integrity, like, are you a good fit for me? Because why would mm -hmm. I want to sell you something if we're not a good fit? Neither of us is going to be happy. What's the point? Yeah. What's the point of that? Exactly. Yeah. So the sales cure is all about just determining that fit. But there yeah. is that part you have to master, which I know you are mastering, of being strong enough to mm -hmm. hold space for people yeah. as they look at something they really don't want to look at, which yeah. is, what if exactly. I don't? Right? What if I don't? Like when I had to grow mm -hmm. Little Pim, my language teaching company, you know, I had hit this revenue ceiling of like 400,000. I was working my tail mm -hmm. off. I had two yeah. little boys at home, right? Who were three and six. And if I totally. didn't figure it out, right? I wasn't going to yeah. be able to send them to the schools I wanted to send them to. I wasn't going to be able to live in Manhattan. I wouldn't be able to afford that. I'd have to move. I wasn't going to be able to live the lifestyle I wanted. Like there was a lot right. at stake. So yeah, I went and found sure. a program, I put $8,000 on a credit card I did not have, right? Yeah. And I did everything they told me to do because right. I knew there was a lot at stake. That's what I'm talking about. You want to find those people where they're like, yeah. I need to figure this out. Like, I'm, For sure. I'm ready. Yeah. Got it. No, I think that's so helpful. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Always good to see you. Have a wonderful Monday. And thanks for joining sounds, us. Sounds oh, like a plan. Thank Wednesday, you. Because we're having a guest. So I hope you can join us. 
Um, oh, Joe, awesome. Good time for me to tell the guest. Hang on while I tell the guest. So we're going to have um, Joe Apfelbaum, who is a LinkedIn master. He helps people yeah. get more business on LinkedIn. And we also actually teamed up on the sales cure and are uh, marketing that together. Did you hear his um, one hour teaching that he did at the summit by chance? I, I'm uh, watching the video recording of it, I believe. So I oh, have, I, yeah, so I'm excited. No, he's okay. cool. I am on his email list and I follow him too. Oh, so okay. I will be There's there. Be a chance to ask some questions <laughs> if you have any about LinkedIn. I know you've really been ramping up your LinkedIn, which has been impressive. Trying to. Maybe take yeah. another look at it and come back with questions Wednesday. We'll get them answered. That's a great tip. Thank you so much, All Julia. Right, so nice to see you. <laughs> Bye, Rabia. Take care. Bye. Thank you. All right, I'm so excited about Rabia's new program. Yeah, it's true that so many people are looking to pivot. That is the program she's created is to help executives figure out where do they go from here? And I think, you know, entrepreneurs are pivoting in the ways they're offering their services. Executives are pivoting and looking at, do I like how my company is handling this crisis? Do I like how they've treated me? Do I like how they've shown up and put our health first or haven't? Do I like how they've responded to the Black Lives Matter movement? Have they? like initiated the tough conversations at work. And if not, maybe it's gonna be time for them to move on and find a company more aligned with their values. So that creates a lot of good opportunities for coaches. And uh, Rabia is a top, top coach. So I know she's gonna put together a terrific program. We have some new people joining us. I'm gonna see if anyone who's new here wants to go live quickly. Uh, Michelle Enriquez, if you'd like to go live with me, I do some live coaching like I just did with Rabia every time. So feel free to send me a little video request. Uh, I see Flip the Zip, hello. I see Nicole. Uh, and also Cheryl, I'm delighted to see you. If you want to go live here, I'm sending you a little invitation. We have time for one more. Now that um, I'm not in Connecticut where my son is waiting for the internet to do his math class, I feel a new sense of freedom uh, in when I end the CEO check-in. All right, waiting to see if Cheryl wants to go live or if someone wants to send me a request, feel free. I also see Fahad Photography, hello. All right, waiting on Cheryl. Um, on Wednesday, when Joe Applebaum comes, he's gonna be talking about how you can get more business on LinkedIn just by spending a few minutes a day contacting people, reaching out, commenting, but there is a, a, a science to it, so I really want you to join us so he can explain how he's helped hundreds of entrepreneurs to ramp up their LinkedIn. And also we're gonna talk a little bit about the sales cure because now more than ever, having good sales skills is so important. You know, maybe before, oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying again, Cheryl. Cheryl's trying to go live. We're, we're trying to go live with each other. Um, now more than ever, it's so important to have good sales skills because there she is. Hello, so good to see you. <laughs> I am good. Let me just finish that sentence. So it's important to have good sales skills because we may have fewer leads, right? With things tightening up for a lot of people. And if someone does reach out to you or they answer one of your newsletters or they DM you on social media, you wanna make sure if you jump on a call with them, you have all the resources available to turn that into a deal. And that's really what the sales cure is all about. And now I'm so excited that Cheryl is with us. You're a masterclass grad, such a talented designer, and I know you're working now with biotech, right? That's like your niche. Is that still going on? Yes, sir. we're trying to put that together as we speak. <laughs> oh, super. How's it yeah. been for you? I haven't seen you since the summit. Oh, it's been a little crazy, you know? It's this whole COVID lockdown is just, it is insane, but I'm doing what I can, you know? I'm trying to stay focused, you know? I'm not as focused as I'd like to be, so that's, you know, like on the weekends, usually I'm working and super focused, but it's like the monotony of the everyday life is killing me. But well, it's also tiring, right? It's tiring to have this like background noise of like, we don't know what's happening in the world and we don't know who's going to get sick. I find it just tiring. Like I'm still working a lot, but I'm more tired. I don't yeah, know if you find I, that too. I'm looking for that energy. You know, it's like the energy of other people interacting. Yes. I've been riding my mm -hmm. to, you know, really get out some like, I don't know what, it's not frustration. It's just like, I need to do something different. <laughs> so, yes. Well, we, we extroverts are having a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I can't wait, but I am, you know, I'm trying to put together a lot of processes, you know, for this pivot, you know, I, I've been doing, um, fortunately, I've been doing very well during this uh, lockdown, you know, we're happy to hear that. 
launched actually a, a skincare line, which is really good. Working on another biotech company, trying to close two more deals, uh, one in the biotech space, one in banking, which is, which is good. So, um, you know, I'm really trying to focus on that and really putting, you know, my efforts into, you know, how am I going to really direct what I do in healthcare slash biotech to those potential clients and make it very easy. And I learned something on the last call that you had was to, um, I forget what you called it, but reverse engineer it basically. So when somebody comes to the site, like what, what do they, you know, what do they want to know? Like, so my, yes. my new tagline is going to be, be seen, be heard, be found. Oh, right? I like it. Because that's really what people want. Like they want to be seen, they want to be heard, and they want to be found. So, you know, those that's three- That's clever. I like that. And I like that you're changing your website to be uh, reflecting the needs of the person coming to the site. We see this as a right. big problem that entrepreneurs have, which is they write their website copy from the perspective of, we're awesome. Let us right. tell you how awesome we are. And you'll just right. want to sit here and read all day all the great things we've done. Right? Yeah. So, so like people you, don't have time for that. And they want to know, how can you help me? So it sounds like you're changing I, a bit. I want someone, like, someone to go to the site and say, you know, my brand is terrible. I need help. You know, um, I have no voice. Nobody can find me. You know, so I really want to take that perspective and really own that and, and reverse engineer. I like it. that. And you know, and Cheryl, you could even take that one step further and get really specific. If you look back at some of your recent clients, like mm -hmm. what was exactly the problem they were trying to solve? Like your biotech companies, I'm just guessing maybe some of them needed to raise capital, either a first round or an additional round. And during right. those times, your look online and how you show up in social media and, and all of your assets just have to be like impeccable. So, right. you know, I could see it even being more specific than like, I need to be found or I need to look good. It could be like, I'm looking to raise a round of capital and my That's brand true. needs an overhaul. Right, exactly. And like, how do I connect with uh, institutional funding, right? So I, I need capital. I kind of I kind of like that. And the, the one thing that, you know, what may set us apart is that we do have relationships with VCs to get these companies money because they strictly deal with biotech. So I do want to, you know, put that on there, but I don't want them to think like, hey, you know, um, we're, we're, the fun, we're the people who are going to fund you. No, we have relationships with, with our previous clients who are looking to fund startup biotech companies you know, that need money. So well, that's you know, a huge advantage. Yeah, that should definitely be on your website. I mean, you can't make any promises. It has to be a great company. But just right. the fact that you can make those introductions is huge. Right. So so there may be one that says, are you looking for funding? You know, we also have access to that as well. So we can I like that. So, well, and I would think now that you, you have this niche it doesn't have to be your only niche, but it's one of your niches as a graphic designer is this biotech space. You know, you could also maybe during this time do a little webinar or do some live like I'm doing here right around what you've learned, what biotech companies need to be thinking about, because maybe they're not quite ready to hire you, but they're gearing up. Right. I was just saying, right. were you on for Rabia before mm -hmm. when we were talking about? So people need to have their problem has to be big enough that they're ready to hire someone. And I know you did the sales cure. Right. So you know what I'm talking about. Yes. But up until that moment. Right. We don't want them getting distracted by some other company that they wind up working with. Right. Well, so you so see, go when, ahead. You, when you say that, you know, you're right on target because I've been doing these Zoom calls with all the clients. Right. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. I love it. How do you how do you do it? How are you organizing that? You know, they, you know, it's, 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 it's somebody who's opening up a door for me and, and yes. we're setting up calls like this because it's the only way we can do business right now. Right. I so, like that, but I'm also talking about doing some actual teaching. Like what if you put up a little tile on social media that said, join me this Friday to know like the top five mistakes you need to avoid as a biotech company seeking right. capital. That's my own insecurities to going online and doing something like this. You can do it. You can do it. Right. So, <laughs> well, but, you know so much, Cheryl. You are such an expert in this space, and anybody would be really lucky to learn from you. But more importantly, it sets you up as a thought leader. You start lining up your next set of clients. Right. You suddenly get comfortable with doing video. I was scared to do this when, when COVID first started, and I was like, okay, I'm going live, Maddie. Let's do this, right? And like setting up the lights and figuring out the sound, and it was, it was hard photographer on staff so he can totally help me but you know getting back to what you were saying you know they're they're the biotech companies are very afraid to be too promotional i said no no i said it's all about educational marketing 
and taking the content that you have and reiterating it to specific audiences in different ways. I said, we do not, we're not promotional. We know your product is not to market. We understand yes. how to stay within compliance. And it's all about- well, What are you telling me for? Tell them. <laughs> That's one of the five. That's one. Okay. <laughs> you only right. need four more and you've got five things. But you know, people like it sometimes when it's like what not to do. Remember in the sales right. cure, I had like the three deadly sins. Mm -hmm. Like, don't do this. Do you remember that in the sales right. cure? Yeah. Yes. And a lot of people watch that first because they're like, well, I'll get to all this other learning later, but I want to make sure I don't do the things that are going to sink my deal. So I bet if you did like a live webinar where it was like, here are the things not to do, a lot of people would show up and you create some relationships and you know, who better but you to do that? Come on, fist bump me, we do it, please, please, come on. Yes, yes, it's happening. <laughs> when Robbie fist bumped me last time, she like launched the whole thing. So it's, you've got a good precedent for this. <laughs> right, right. So, you know, I guess it's a matter of knowing, my, not knowing the topic, like having a certain topic and really having my Well, voice. let's ask Mota Lent Live, Mo Talent Live, Mo do, you, do you think Cheryl should do a live teaching about the five things not to do if you're a biotech company looking to raise capital who wants to like <laughs> up your brand image and like appear like an amazing investable top tier company? Because she did just write in, Cheryl is one of the most incredibly talented people I am lucky enough to know. Professionalism is off the charts. Yeah, Mo, Mo. Uh, the Mo. verdict in, she said, of course. She's amazing. <laughs> is my DJ client that I help, you know, rebrand and get, you know, put him together. And he was basically going to partner with someone. Well, you're the real deal. Don't Cheryl. need to partner with anybody. I said, I just need to with your brand. I love it. <laughs> and I did. I so love it. So well, you know what? Yeah. You got to go start working on this right now. So it's the five things not to do and just pick a date and then start advertising it. It could be maybe a week from today. Monday's not a great day. People are getting caught up on Mondays. Maybe it's like a week from this Wednesday, right? Okay. And then just <laughs> send out an email to everybody in your list. Say, hey, show up, you know, you're gonna be awesome. I can't wait to hear about it. All right, thank you. And so good to see you today. Thank Have you. an awesome Monday. Come back in, let us know how it went, okay? We wanna hear after. Thank you. Mwah. Take care, <laughs> Cheryl. So great to see you, bye. <laughs> Bye. She was cutting in and out a little bit at the end. I'm not exactly sure what she said at the end, but um, I always love seeing Cheryl. She also designed our fantastic logo for the Million Dollar Women's Summit. She did the one last year for the New York one, and then this year for the virtual summit when we called her up and said, ah, it's going virtual. We need a new logo. She was like, no problem. Cheryl is definitely the person you can count on with just amazing design and talent. So we heard from two incredible women in our community today, the Million Dollar Women community, both graduates of our online program called Million Dollar Women Masterclass. So if you are new to us and you don't know about Masterclass, it's a four month group coaching program. If you contact me through um, DMing me on Instagram, we can get on a call with you and help you figure out if you're a fit for helping us help you build a more scalable, profitable, and fundable business. So good to see you all today. I hope you have an excellent rest of day and um, stay brave, stay healthy. And I will see you Wednesday when we have Joe Applebaum on here talking about LinkedIn marketing and also how you can rock your sales. Have a great day. Bye.